For 15 years, Future Everything, previously Future Sonic, has been championing digital creativity and digital innovation. We've worked as a part of a community, an international community, of inspirational people who have sought to make a difference to people's lives, to, tr to transform lives through creativity and digital innovation. In the first year of the Future Everything Festival, as we move from Future Sonic to Future Everything, we've introduced our new award. It feels appropriate that for the first time, we stand up and really celebrate the kind of artists and the kind of visionary innovation that we've been excited by and sought to support and champion for so long through this award. The winner receives a £10,000 prize and the Future Everything trophy, which I, I see before me. Um, with the award, we invited people to nominate works and to submit works. Uh, the uh, competition will be open again soon for next year. Uh, we had a very exhaustive, rigorous process. Uh, we had an international jury that whittled that, those uh, entrants down to a short list of just three, three outstanding candidates. And then we put those candidates to an open vote of the Future Everything community. We always say that the Future Everything community is at the heart of what we do. That's the group of people who've participated in the festival over 15 years. Those international visionary people who each year come to Manchester to make this such a special event. And we felt it was in keeping with the ethos of Future Everything that it should be an open vote of those people that should decide the final winner. In a world that is moving and developing so quickly, I know Andrew and I feel very proud and excited that the part that we are helping to play here this evening and particularly ensuring that Manchester stays at the forefront in this very exciting project. So it gives uh, Andrew and myself great pleasure to present the very first Future Everything Award to the iWriter. So I would like to invite Evan Roth to accept the trophy and say a few words. Congratulations, Evan. So uh, my name is Evan Roth, I'm one part of the iWriter team. So iWriter is an open source, do-it-yourself eye tracking software. It was originally built for uh, Tony Kwan, who was, he's an artist and activist that has ALS, which is a degenerative disease, and so over the course of seven or so years, he's sort of slowly lost all movement except for his eyes. Uh, and so we were, the team of us was introduced to him, so the iWriter project is myself, Zach Lieberman, Theo Watson, Chris Segrew, James Powderly, and, and Tony. Uh, and so now the, the six of us are sort of, originally it was about making Tony uh, a, a piece of software and a, and a do-it-yourself sort of eye tracking device that consisted of sort of off-the-shelf parts. Um, we're trying to make it as easily um, reproduced as possible, so people that might not have even soldering skills, like the current version, of, the current design has no soldering, it's like zip ties and alligator clips and a PlayStation 3 camera. There's been some, some attention, I mean, thanks to Future Everything, actually on the project since so we've been getting these emails in uh, and a lot of them are very excited and very positive a lot of them are also like very sad you know it's people that they don't want to just write graffiti they don't want to draw they, they just want to say hi to their aunt or they want to be able to talk to their son and and so the next stage of the project is going to be us working with Tony to make a new system that transitions maybe a bit away from writing graffiti and, and into writing emails, which seems to be the thing that people really need, uh, and browsing websites and controlling computers. There's, there's commercial systems out there that do this and they, and they do it well, except they're prohibitively expensive for a lot of people. And so the idea with the iWriter project is that we, the software remains free. It's an open source project so that other people can come in and develop for it. Uh, and, and the hardware side, we're trying to keep things as cheap as possible. We're having meetings now about what to do with this, this nice new funding that we have for Future Everything. Uh, and there's a lot of things on the table, but one that keeps coming up in meetings is, is this idea of making kits. Um, we, wanna, we still want to keep things extremely easy to reproduce, so maybe even one step more accessible than your typical sort of DIY or like someone who's really, uh, who might not be comfortable soldering, for example. But that being said, we also cost is a big factor and so a lot of people they have access to computers um, and the, the cost beyond the computers are relatively low it's, it's the cost of a camera which is the one we've been using is around 30 pounds uh, and so what we'd like to do is 
make kits that if we buy parts in bulk, for example, we can get the price of the kits down really, really low and then offer them at cost to people that you know, otherwise couldn't afford this. And so that's one thing we've been talking about. Another thing we've been talking about is because it's an open source project, we're trying to get as many people involved as we can. Um, using some of that budget to reach out specifically to people that we know to be experts in the field. Um, and and not, not to like pay them to work on the project, but a lot of people are happy to take part in the project, but you know, everyone's busy. Uh, but with if we can make a proper invitation to people, we might be able to have some sort of like a summit we've been talking about, sort of a, an, an invitation summit where maybe that would probably happen in Los Angeles, close to where Tony is, and we might be able to fly in specific people that we think could really, in a concentrated, week-long, dedicated think tank, sort of take the project to the next level. Winning the award means a few things to us. I mean, one of them is, is attention. And so attention on this project is maybe different than attention on some of the other projects I've worked on or that collaborators in the project have worked on, because it's not just about uh, holding up a trophy and, and smiling on stage, which always feels nice, but it's about getting more awareness of the project because we are trying to develop this as an open project and, and a project where we're trying to get developers. And so every time a, a big award like this comes along and throws a, sh a spotlight on the project, for us it's, it's a big deal beyond you know, feeling good that this project is, is having some resonance with people, which is important also. But beyond that, it really helps us reach more people. I mean, having uh, internationally known awards such as this, um, more people are going to want to take part in the project now. More people are going to hear about the project. And to us, that, that's a big deal because we need we need people to jump into this. Um, right now, it's it's the five of us, and of the five, it's really it's really Zach, Theo, and Chris that are bearing the brunt of the programming work. And so, the more people that this can reach, and the more people that hear about it, the more programmers we might get emails from, which would be a big deal. A, a last piece is that. Tony is now like a practicing artist. I mean, now that he has his ability to draw again, he's making work and he's getting invitations and, and he's interested in, in showing his art again. And so we've been thinking about using a small portion of the money to maybe throw an art show for him where he's able to sort of display all the things that he's been making with this. And we've already been doing this to a small degree, but it'd be nice to have like a tempt one, you know, Tony Kwan solo show. So I think that would be exciting. Great. Brilliant. Good? Yeah, it's pretty